All the students are children of migrant workers who have flocked to coastal cities from poorer inland provinces, enabling China's economic miracle. These kids are so vivacious. Sure, they're better off here than they'd be in their rural hometowns, but how will they feel when they realize they are not like the children of Shanghai residents? In China, there are more than 200 million migrant workers, peasants who have come to cities seeking a better life. In Shanghai, there are about half a million children of migrant workers, receiving compulsory education from elementary school through middle school. Municipal government funding supports their education. The schools offer a rigorous curriculum designed to prepare students for national examinations. As part of the national curriculum, they need to learn English. Suen Kai is an 11-year-old in the fourth grade. A year ago, he transferred from a poor school in Anhui province. With the gap in education between Anhui and Shanghai so large, how will a child like Suen Kai ever adjust? I ask his teacher. Suen Kai's father picks him up every day. How did he himself adjust to the radically new life in Shanghai? As a worker who, who's come from another area to Shanghai, uh, how was life when you first came here? How do the Shanghai schools compare to Anhui schools? So how is he doing now? Has he been catching up? The schools you had back in your hometown, were they, how did they compare to Shanghai? <laughs> Outside of school, what kind of lives do these children have? 
I visit the local market where many parents of Jinding students, all migrant workers, find hard scrabble jobs. Yang Shijun is from Henan, another poor province. For 12 years, he has worked this small butcher shop. <laughs> Yang's family lives in this 50 square meter apartment. His son, Yang Chong Wu, also goes to Jinding school. His mother frets about his progress. Cheng Wu's classmate, Wen Kai, also struggles with school. But for his family, life, finally, is getting better. After striving in Shanghai for a decade, Wen Kai's father now owns his own small business. Even for successful migrant families, their children cannot overcome structural barriers. They may dream of going to college, but they cannot. According to policy, if migrant children do not return to their home provinces when they reach ninth grade, they can apply only to vocational schools. Migrant workers contribute so much to these cities, and through education, they desire to change their children's fate. It's a challenge that China must face, and one I put to the headmaster of Cheng Wu's and Wen Kai school. The fact that the migrant workers' children cannot do high school in, in uh, Shanghai is a huge disadvantage to them because then they're unable to go to college and, and their careers are, are capped and it's very difficult for them to become lawyers or doctors. But what about the multitudes of rural children who have not moved to the major cities? They're called left-behind children, almost 60 million of them whose parents have migrated to the cities. Usually their parents return home only once a year and then only for a short visit. Like Suwen Kai's older sister, who is still back home in a small village, cared for by her grandparents, attending the local school. Left behind children in rural China, like Wen Kai's sister, has become a national heartbreak. Education Educational disparities undermine the vitality of Chinese society. For many, the Chinese dream can never come true. In 2012, Premier Wen Jiabao promised that educational funding would grow to 4% of China's GDP 
a major commitment to China's future. What do you guys want to be when you grow up? What do you want to study to become? What do you want to be when you grow up? What do you want to study to become? 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 So is education equal? Can it be equal? The obvious challenge will help determine whether China can solve its most divisive and intractable problem of social imbalances. I know that China's leaders are focused on solving this problem. Now, as the result of a new policy, children of uh, migrant families will be able to take high school and university entrance exams where they live, and that's according to a state council report. Now, the new policy allows uh, migrant uh, students to take entrance exams at their schools without the usual registration requirements. The local authorities are expected to roll out the new policy by the end of uh, this year. When I ask young adults in China's big cities, what's your biggest problem? They do not hesitate. Housing, they often exclaim. Housing prices. Beijing is the center of China's political culture. Resonating China's history radiating China's future. Those who move to Beijing are called Beijing Dream Pursuers. To own a home in Beijing is the ultimate goal. I cruise Beijing avenues and wander Beijing neighborhoods. How the city is transforming, arising but not evenly for everyone. Hu Jupeng is 34 years old. He's been working in Beijing for 11 years. His daughter is four years old. They all live in this 60 square meter apartment. Their monthly rent is 2,800 RMB. Chuan 但是呢,有了孩子以后可能考虑的就更多了一些,因为带着孩子岁数的搬家就觉得特别的没有安全感。Watching their daughter grow up, Hu Jirpeng and his wife are eager to purchase a home.